Let's bring in Chris Sankar, analyst over at Cowan, covers Apple. He's probably getting ready for a very busy afternoon. So, Chris, we largely expect that most businesses are going to have revenue declines year over year. They pretty much told us that in January. So what's going to move the needle? Yeah, hey, uh, Don, thanks for having me. Um, like you mentioned, yeah, they kind of set the tone. Revenue is supposed to be down about 5% year over year in March. We are modeling um, uh, growth in June on a relative basis year over year. We do have it up like 2.5% year over year in June. From revenues, sequentially, it's going to be down. Keep in mind, June quarter tends to be uh, the weakest quarter for them, both in terms of uh, iPhone units and also purging of um, the iPhone inventory to make way for the new model. So I think what investors are really going to be looking for is kind of like see where the guide ends up being for revenue, commentary on iPhone demand. I think FX is less of a headwind this time around versus like a, a quarter or two or a, two ago, but now it's not a real big concern. And also I'd probably say kind of like uh, at the margin, any kind of commentary on uh, services, the new retail store in India, anything on AI, uh, on the on the you know the other etc category I would say we were talking about Paramount a uh, Paramount Krish which is having such a rough day and it's always mooted that oh maybe Apple would buy it maybe this maybe that and you know as Steve Kovac was pointing out it's kind of like when people say JP Morgan's going to buy any ailing regional bank you know no they're not but maybe they could make a play for sports rights and for the NBA in particular and that would probably be a big ticket purchase um, you know as we're all watching kind of what's been a fun series between uh, a bunch of these teams in, in pl early playoffs. Do you have a comment on that? I mean, would this be the deal of all deals for them to land? Would it be worth it? You know, it's tough to say, to be completely honest. Honestly, like, you know, I mean, they have net cash of about 54 billion, you know, gross cash, like not the 150 billion. And when you have that much cash and such a strong balance sheet, the world is your oyster. Um, but I would probably say that, you know, where you're seeing them focus, they definitely have some focus on the media side. Um, you know, I have no idea whether they're going to make a bid or not. It's kind of like, you know, way about what I would like to consider heading into this earnings season. But I think people have speculated Apple buying anything and everything given their robust balance sheet. Uh, so, you know, uh, it's hard for me to speculate sitting out here. You know, it, it's funny, too. He, he's probably right not to because, you know, Apple was reportedly in the running for a Sunday ticket for mm. the NFL mm -hmm. and for live sports and, you well, know, there's... Alphabet got it instead. So they had the money. They didn't spend it There's on that stuff. There's not limitless packages, There though. is not. You know. So I, I mean, I, so that's the thing. If Apple's going to spend their money, what is it going to be on? Where do you deploy that cash? It's the massive balance sheet of all balance sheets. What exactly do you invest in that's going to make Apple the stock for the next, say, 10, 20 years? You know, if you look at what they've done, you know, uh, on a relative basis over the last several years, they've been more, I would say, risk covers. Um, you know, you hear about, you mentioned the Sunday ticket, you hear after the fact they bid for it, they didn't go all the way in. So I feel like, you know, there are a lot of options that they could go through. You know, the incremental new products that are coming up, people talk about uh, headsets, AR, VR, you know, maybe an auto down the road, not, not in the next couple of years, maybe in the future. I think there's a lot of verticals that they can get in. Health is another aspect of it. But what you've seen is they've been more, you know, doing it in a very cautiously you know, a uh, way of approaching it and not just kind of like randomly buying every asset they could get their hands on. You know, actually, you know, talking about um, capital deployment, we do think they might probably increase the dividend, which they're kind of done on a pretty steady cadence every April or May time frame for the last several years. So I do think that there is one aspect where they want to, you know, return it to their existing shareholders in the form of dividends and buybacks. Then there's the other aspect, which is kind of like, you know, the inorganic growth opportunity but you also seen them actually do quite a bit of investment in organic growth opportunity, whether it is like yeah. you know, scaling up the TV yeah. plus or whatever it might be.